I think the thing that has not been talked about enough is the psychic, the actual psychic shift of this race. And it's that psychic shift in this race that has Donald Trump psyched out. We have some of the most uh, thoughtful, really, and interesting video uh, just in from MSNBC to share with you today. It's Matt Dowd, you know, the former Bush political strategist. Well, he offers up a great assessment of Harris's growing strengths, Trump's growing weaknesses, and a big boy pants recommendation for a last chance life preserver that just might keep Donald away from the electric sharks that are circling his Titanic campaign as it lists towards an iceberg named Kamala, you know, I have to say it, Kamala. So let's take a second to hang with Matt Dowd and Nicole Wallace and see how we got here, where we uh, are going, and identify the one and only chance that Trump may have to save his sinking ship. Well, I'm not a big fan of sharks either. First, how did we get here? What happened a few weeks ago is Joe Biden stepped back and then 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 pushed and then said he endorsed Kamala Harris in this race. That was like him stepping on the fault line of our politics and the tectonic plates fundamentally moved. And when those tectonic plates moved, what happened was is the facts that were on the ground began to line up with people's feelings because what held back the Democratic ticket wasn't the facts. The facts were always there. It's how people felt. And for some reason, this psychic shift from Joe Biden, where people felt sour, where people didn't feel right, where people begrudgingly said, I'm going to do that, I'm going to vote for that, all of a sudden changed. And what happened What happened dramatically? Good. Vice President Harris's numbers, favorability numbers, have improved by 20 points in three weeks. 20-point improvements in her favorability numbers. Now, this is a stunning development as the blue wave begins to crest, and the tide of hope and decency raises spirits and inspires voters uh, across the country and also now across party lines. So what's the reason for this change? Well, let's check out some more of Matt Dowd's great take and uh, stick around uh, as it goes. You're going to see his free advice to Donald Trump. We, people have argued the facts now for months and months and months and months, and the public seem to be impervious to the facts. But all of a sudden now they're not no longer impervious because their feelings of the race has fundamentally changed. And that's the problem that Donald Trump and his campaign have. And I, you know, struggling through this as a strategist just to sort of, you know, put it up and see how you could fix this. It's very hard to fix it when there's been that psychic of a shift in a race. Matt, with that said, take me through how you see the data that's out today. The new data is the Cook Political Report. And then I think yesterday or earlier this week, we had the new New York Times polling, which puts her ahead in most of the battleground states. So in my view of the data right now is they are actually underestimating Vice President Harris's support. The, the, the Cook wow. Political Report data were, came, out of the field, came out of the field August 2nd. The data was out 12 days ago, so it, it hasn't been in the field. It was gone two weeks ago. And so to me, the last 10 days have only improved the vice president's position. There is a Monmouth poll out in the last two hours, a national poll, that had the race as close, as right on as anybody in 2020. They had Joe Biden winning the race in 2020 by five points. He won it by four and a half. As of today, the vice president has a five-point lead nationally in this race in a very A-plus polling firm in the course of this. And so I think when we discuss the Cook political report and the New York Times political report and all that, all good news, but I don't think it's near as good news as what I actually think the reality is today. And that's why I think you're seeing the aggression. That's why I think you're seeing the floundering by Donald Trump and his campaign. That's why you're think, seeing the discussion. of They know this data that I'm telling you. They, they don't think it's a one-point race yeah. anymore or a two-point race. They know it's a four- or five-point race as of today. I think we forget how unelectable Donald Trump is. I, I think because he won in 2016, he lost the popular vote by three or four million votes. He barely won because of a series of things in electoral states against an unpopular candidate, Hillary Clinton, in this. And then in 2020, he loses by seven million votes in the course of this and has horrible favorability numbers. He carried horrible favorability numbers through most of the last two or three years. There was a moment in time in the aftermath of Joe Biden's debate performance and then the, the Republican convention and then the Donald Trump's attempted assassination where Donald Trump's favorability numbers didn't go positive, but they improved. And that improvement only gave him a one or two point lead. 
that all of those factors that were in play. And, and so I think what we've often underestimated because of the whatever the holdback was on Joe Biden because of his age and all the question marks in that, as soon as that holdback was removed, the nature of the race then returned to a or went to a place that we have not seen, which is now a popular Democratic candidate, far more popular than Joe Biden, far more popular than Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump's numbers returning to the norm of what they normally are. They were in 2016 and they were in 2020. And so you have this situation, to me, that, that, that it's only going to get improved for the vice president when you go through the next week of the Democratic convention. And the question is, how does Donald Trump change the dynamic of the race that's fundamentally shifted? And to me, there's only one way. He has to do a debate. Well, it seems there's no debate about it. Uh, the biggest mouth since maybe... He was a hero. We'll be right back. He'll have to put his big boy pants on, suck it up for an epic debate, and desperately try to grab his political manhood back from a foe the likes of which he's never encountered before, and one that may finally cuff those grabbing hands.